are seeing the fallout this week for South Florida's teachers unions from a new state law that makes it more difficult to collect dues and raises the standard to remain state certified. Both United Teachers of Dade and Broward Teachers Union failed to reach the first new benchmark necessary 60% of dues paying members and now they must hold elections and get half the membership plus one to say yes to remain in existence. BTU President Anna Fusco here to get into what exactly is happening with all of that. And I know, Anna, there's, well, first of all, thank you and hello. Hey. <laughs> Great to have hey, you. How are you, doing? Thank you. So um, there's a lot of confusion about this new process. There's a lot of politics involved. And I'm, and I'm happy you're here at the table because I really, let's just start very generally. This is a union fight. It's a political fight. It has partisan overtones. Um, this is the new state law that's been a year old, but this is the first school year that right. we're operating under that. Um, and so I just want to set the stage for us right now. You are going to go to an election. Yes. With your teachers to say 50 plus one, we want to remain. Mm -hmm. That's where we are yes. now. How did we get here? Well, we got here from an egregious bill that happened through the makers from the Freedom Foundation. Cut and dry brought it over to the governor and state legislation, and here we sit. So the 250, uh, Senate Bill 256 is the bill you're talking about. Yes. Essentially, if I could headline it, supporters say it protects workers' rights to deal with their union. Um, opponents say it's a union-busting bill. Right. We, and it, there's probably a little truth to both of those things. Um, but the, the components of that bill, mm -hmm. I think the two components of the bill is a, no more paycheck deductions to pay the dues. It's right. a much more physical way to pay the bills. What, why is that such an issue? Well, first of all, it takes away people's rights and freedoms to have the ownership of how they want to pay for something. We do payroll deduction for everything. And there's, and there's nothing that's not payroll deduction except now union dues. So let's make that clear. In, in the school in, in paycheck? The, in the school paycheck. So um, that's, that's an insult to us as educators, us as women. It's a woman-dominated profession. That's what we're looking at twofold. And it looks like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it looks like, because, well, the first benchmark is you have to have 60% now right. of union dues paying right. members to make that benchmark, which you did not reach. UTD didn't reach it, just under. But there are members, there are those members, they are just not dues paying members. Right. So they made it harder to pay the dues and then that's the benchmark you have to meet. But why wouldn't a teacher who wants to belong to the union find another way to pay the dues? Is it that difficult? Well, it's not difficult. I think here's the number one reason why that the, the people haven't changed over yet is because they're so busy. You know, they get bombarded by tons of emails from just in the workforce, emails from dealing with the parents, so they're busy. And both of us, myself, Broward, and UTD, have thousands and thousands and thousands of potential members and thousands and thousands of members. So they're, they, they pay attention, but they don't pay attention because they just want to get up, do their job, be the great educator that they are, go home and, and, and tend to their families. They signed union cards a long time ago. There's been dues deduction for most of our members 20 plus years. And when we finally reach them, we're like, what do you mean? I'm not a union. I pay my dues. I have payroll deduction. I didn't know. They just don't so it's know. an awareness campaign. It's that an you know awareness have to do. campaign for almost anything. It's just like when a new um, resource rolls out. You know, oh, I have to change from this to this. It's just an awareness. So on some level, if someone is not paying dues for something, you're saying it's they didn't understand the change, and now they have to go and make that change. Um, is the union important enough to the bulk of your membership and the services you provide? And, and I, I don't ask that no, in a political way. I ask that as just a very factual way. Is it important enough for them to pay attention and belong to the union? Because in this state, you don't have to. It's to still every, reap the benefits. Everything's important to pay attention. Yeah. Let's look at how many people came out and voted in our primary, 14%. Mm -hmm. And we had five school board races. So I think that what we, because I'm in it every day and I live it, it's important, just like your job in getting the news out there and everybody watches the news. So it's what lane you're in. And what's the most important component for our educators is showing up for their student. And 
being part of your union is important and it's just like anything we just have to bring it to their attention again and get awareness and when you've been a member for 20 years and you're not paying attention to egregious people that just want to come in and harm you they're ba they're, just, they're there for the student so the egregious people who want to harm you mm. it, that's that's a problematic thing for me to address because there's they are not here but I, I want to... Oh, I think they're in that room coming on next. Well, well next we have a member of another union. We're going to talk all they're about not, this. They're, no, they're not a member of any union. They are... They trying are a, to form they're, one. They're not forming a union. They're a fake group. I that invite is by everybody to I, stay no, with us to, for that conversation. Oh, I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate you saying that, yeah. but let's make it clear. They are not a union. That gentleman's never been part of a union. And they are part of the Freedom Foundation, Proud Boys, Moms of Liberty, the very group that villainize us educators. So, okay, and we will talk all about that. And okay. let, me, let me ask you a question as long as you brought sure. it up. So the Freedom Foundation, who is backing a challenge, not to your no. union, but to the Dade Union, yes. is backing a challenge under the sort of mission statement that unions are government entities who are a partisan. And so uh, why don't you address that as the president of a union, is your union a partisan government union? No, we're a union that works for the good of our educators and until bring back to our student. By the way, I've never heard that organization ever talk about what they do for the students or what they do for the schools. And that's what Broward Teachers Union does, UTD and every union in Florida. First and foremost, if you've got great working conditions in the schools, who does it benefit the most? the student. So when air conditioning is out, roofs are leaking, schools are dirty, there's, there's problematic just situational things happening and there's not a group out there that is in there saying look what's happening, let's get things done, let's work together. That is what we are about, what we do for our educators and all of our support staff and then it all comes back twofold for our student population. Okay, so, so now that said, now that you have to meet the benchmarks of this new law, oh. Yes. The, uh, the next step was to get to this election, you needed interest cards from a third, roughly a third of the membership, which you got. Yes. So you're headed to this election. Uh, what's your, what's your, the, do, is the election set yet? No, okay. it's not For set. Broward We're still working not. out some semantics with PERC, working um, diligently with the Broward County Public Schools team. We just have to just coordinate of all the job titles. You know, things have changed over the years. Like uh, an example, at one time we were, a guidance counselor been called the guidance counselor now they're called a school counselor so they just have to change all the make sure all the names correlate so we're working really collaboratively with our Broward County Public Schools technically HR for that. team so and then, then they'll set an election and whenever that may be because PERC is you know has tons that they're running because it's not just for teachers that this all public all unions right and unfortunately all public employees except public for employees. two public employee relations commission is PERC yes okay so um, so your election with PERC when it's set will be a yay or nay election. Yes, yes BTU, BTU or nothing. Or nothing. You do not have a challenging group. We do that. not. And what's your uh, prognostication? It's gonna be an overwhelmingly yes. We got an overwhelmingly for our um, commitment cards and we are growing every single day in our membership. It's just having conversations and making people more aware. Our, our first component of meeting with our educators is them being the educator and is everything okay in their schools and then we tie in the union piece because we know it's important because they really understand once they hear those conversations the importance of being a union the our public everything is on the foundation of unions of making sure people are taken care of and that's what good humans do we take care of each other Anna Fusco, we will, you will let us know when the election is, and I appreciate you coming in and really taking us through factually what is going on, as always. It. Thank you.